Hey there fellow space travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today you'll never guess we are. We're on the planet Mars. Look at it. The barrenness of Mars with the rocks and maybe some traces of life. Don't mind that grass there. No, actually we're in Iceland. But today what I thought I'd give you guys are five things you're going to love and hate about visiting Mars. Because there's been so much news lately about rovers going to Mars and people trying to, when are we going to send people to Mars? And heck, they want to do a reality show of sending people to Mars and then watching them live and die there for the rest of their lives. And so I thought, you know what? These people are probably signing up and they haven't thought it all the way through. So today we have for you are the five things you're going to love and hate about visiting Mars. So let's get started. Now the first thing you're probably not going to like about Mars is the weather because it is cold in Mars. No matter where you go, it can be a wee bit chilly. The farther you go from the equator, the colder it gets, just like here. And the thing is, also, it's not just the cold, it's also the wind. Oh, the wind there with their dust storms, because the dust on Mars gets everywhere and clogs everything up, probably will cover your solar panels, so you got to clean those off carefully so you can still get the sun to power your ship and power your, your living quarters and all these kind of things, so, oh, that's really bad. Also what sucks with the weather is the solar storms, the radiation that comes through. Mars does not really have a very good magnetic field. Actually, it only has little spotty parts of magnetic fields, so the radiation from the sun will come and probably kill you. So you want to make sure you got something for that, okay? Now, to go along with that radiation, the second thing you're going to hate about going to Mars is finding accommodation. Now, we're traveling around Iceland, and they've got guest houses, lots of places, but there is also a lot of barren, desolate land. And so when you find one, you're really happy. And on Mars, it's going to be the same way, because you're going to have to bring your accommodation with you, because you might be able to dig a hole in the ground to save yourself from some radiation here and there, but you're going to need a place to live because <coughs> there's no oxygen. You can't breathe the air on Mars, at least not yet in terms of what we can do with science. So you need to have that shelter that's going to give you the air, going to protect you from the radiation, all those kind of things. So that's really going to suck is getting that together, okay? Also, your accommodation there is going to be pretty tight because we have to ship everything from Earth to Mars to get it there ready for you. So that's the second thing that's going to suck is the shelter and getting that oxygen going and all those things and the cramped spaces where you're going to live. Now, the third thing that's going to suck about living on Mars are the people you're with. Now, when you go to Mars, if you're chosen to go, most likely it's a team of people that a government agency or a reality TV show chooses. Have you ever wanted to be with anybody on a reality TV show? I don't think so. So most likely you're going to be with people that are going to drive you a little nuts, especially when it takes you two years to get there. So make sure if you got a choice, get to know the people you're going with because though all of your friends will want to come visit you, probably nobody's going to have the money to pay to come see you on their spring break. Okay, so be prepared for that. The fourth thing you're not going to like about going to Mars is the fact that you're going to be quite alone. Okay. Now, when I say the loneliness and I say these things, I know I talk about the people you're coming with, but also you look at the loneliness in terms of it is very barren there. There are no Martians here. And even if you find Martians, they're probably microbial life. Very, very tiny. Not really good for conversation. You know, things like that. There's no little green men popping up out of the ground saying, hey, I'm Marvin the Martian. How's it going? No. <laughs> You're not going to have that. And it will get very lonely here. And the communication back home takes a lot of time. So if you want to have a phone call to mom back home to tell her happy birthday, it's going to take time for it to go back to Earth and then bounce back to you. And that can be, you know, ruined for the conversation. So to kind of get through that, what I recommend is get your email skills ready so you can send a letter to them and they can write to you back because it's like you're one of the old time adventurers, you know, hoping for the Pony Express to come with mail for you. Well, that will be your email. Ding, you have mail. Oh, goody, someone wrote me today. The fifth thing you're not going to like about going to Mars, and one of the things that does make traveling just in general tough, is it is very expensive to go to Mars. It's billions and billions of dollars 
to get to Mars, to get your, you know, get your accommodation, get your, get your stuff to go there. It does take a lot of money. And if we're looking at our flights to go there, they are pricey and it takes a long time to get there because it could take you up to two years round trip. Get on your flight, you know, boost off your rocket, boom, get to Mars, stay a few weeks or a few months and check out the scenery, do some experiments and these kind of things, then get back and fly back. And the thing is, here, I can come to Iceland. Delta's got a flight every day. Iceland Air's got a flight every day from all kinds of places all over the US. Very easy to get to. However, going to Mars, you can't leave just any day. There's a period when you can actually fly to Mars. It only comes you know, every couple years. So you're kind of stuck when you can go. So don't be late for your flight. Otherwise, you might have to wait to the next flight in two years, okay? So there's that. So those are five things you might not like about going to Mars, but what are you gonna love about going to Mars? And the first thing you're gonna love about going to Mars is you're gonna be the first person on Mars. You are history. Give her, Kardashian Smartdashian, Kanye Wanye, whatever. This is real history. This is Neil Armstrong. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. You are a trailblazer. You are a name that will go down in history being that first person down there. Now, if you don't want to be someone that everyone remembers, you don't want to be the Neil Armstrong or the Buzz Aldrin, maybe you stay in the, the orbiter above, okay? And you can still, I went to Mars, but you're not the most famous person out there, okay? That guy that stayed up there, rock star guy, okay? The second thing you're gonna love about going to Mars is you get to explore. You get to be Lewis and Clark. You get to be Magellan, and you get to be, you know, the Vikings coming to Greenland, and you get you get to be an explorer and something that we don't do as a race so much anymore. We've explored the four corners of the Earth, and now we're going to the ocean. So what's left is space, and you get to be an explorer, and see things like Olympus Mons, the tallest volcano in the solar system. You get to see the craters there. You get to explore and go all around and see things no one else has seen. Yes, there are some satellites going above, but anyone that's ever been on Google Maps knows Google Maps don't show everything and neither do the space, the, the, the satellites that we send to Mars. So you get to explore. The third thing you're gonna love about it are the experiments you get to do. You get to see, hmm, what happens when, when I, what, what is actually in the ice there? Can I drink it right away? Do I need to purify it? Are there microbes in there? Are there little Martians in there? What's underground? If we dug down below the earth, or sorry, the Martian soil, what would we find? Think of all these amazing experiments you could be doing. And believe me, NASA and the ESA and everybody's gonna have great tons of cool experiments for you to do. And you get to do those and you get to figure these things out, excuse me, and the first person to figure it out, it is just cool as can be. Now, the fourth thing you're gonna love about going there is the fact that since it's a two year journey going there and back, well, you finally get to catch up on all those series you've missed and all your training to go to Mars. Cause you've been running miles every day and practicing holding your breath and, and the G4 spinning you around and things like that. Now you get some time to relax. In that two years, you can catch up on all the shows you've been missing. You can binge watch with your Hulu or Netflix or, or whichever. So Game of Thrones filmed here in Iceland part of the time. Hey, you can see that. Doctor Who, you can be your own space traveler. Learn from the doctor. Uh, you know, you never did actually see Breaking Bad season five. Now's your chance. Think of all the binge watch you can do. Nobody's gonna interrupt you because it's you by yourself or maybe two other people. They'll have their own iPads. They can watch their own shows. You finally get to do all the binge watching you want. Yes. And the fifth thing you're gonna love about going to Mars is it could be really kind of a crazy dieting trip because think about it, you're gonna go there zero gravity while you're flying there, micro or well, microgravity when you're flying there, very low gravity when you're on Mars, and you know what? Your bone density and your muscle mass is gonna shrink up, and so you might come back a lot thinner than you were when you left, which actually that doesn't really sound very healthy or good, so maybe that should be a hate, but if you're a fat guy like me, hey NASA, this could be a crazy new diet trend, go to Mars, lose 50 pounds, I'm just saying. Anyway, those are five things you might love and hate about going to Mars. We really hope that you can help sponsor programs and, and create your congressman to say yes, keep NASA going, keep funding them. There's great things coming from NASA. We're sending more probes to, to, to Mars. We're going to see asteroids. We're going, you know, with the Pluto. 
there's just so much that we can do. The James Webb Space Telescope is heading out in a couple years. There's so many great things in science that's out there. And I really, in Walter's world, we really do support the sciences. And we really hope that you can help support the sciences as well. And there's great YouTube channels out there. The NASA has their own one. Jet Propulsion Laboratory has their own. SciShow Space has got some fun stuff. Deep Astronomy's got some interesting things out there. Uh, Space Fan News, if you want to learn the latest about space you know, news that's out there, there's all kinds of great things. And let people know that you aren't afraid to say, live long and prosper. Because you know what? If we're going to Mars, we're going to other places. And you know what? And if you can't travel to Mars, it's okay. We've got stuff here for you. Five things you're going to love and hate about going to Iceland. Ten things that'll shock you about Iceland. All kinds of stuff for just traveling here on Earth on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And if you're heading to Mars and you've got some other tips, some love and hates, please put it down there because I haven't been there yet. I mean, this is kind of me guessing what it is. So I'd really love to have anybody else's ideas. So you rovers out there in, uh, you rovers out there on Mars, you got anything for me that you love and hate? Let me know, because I know you guys hate the dust because it covers your solar panels and gets your wheels all stuck and stuff. So I understand. Anyway, I'll say bye or live long and prosper or may the force be with you or whichever you would prefer. <laughs> we'll see you later and bye from Mars, Iceland. Bye, bless, bless.